Good morning. This is uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. Okay, uh, the date for today is uh, September 22, 2023. The time is uh, 5.46 a.m. Okay, my topic for this session will be a long video format discussion and this will be college algebra. We are almost done with college algebra. My topic for this morning will be a very important topic and this will be the so-called uh, Rational Roots Theorem and this will now be lesson number 65. Uh, we are almost done with college algebra. Okay, let's proceed. College algebra. Okay, lesson number 69 and the title of the topic is uh, Rational Roots Theorem. Uh, rational meaning it should be whole numbers. Uh, we are computing for the solution of uh, an equation and it should be rational. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the form of the equation. I will try to read it, okay? Uh, e sub n times x raised to n plus e raised to the subscript n minus 1 times x raised to n minus 1 this is actually decreasing. The last two parts will be a sub 1 times x to the first power. And the last part is actually a sub 0. Uh, there is actually an x over here, but it is uh, raised to the 0. But x raised to the 0 is 1, so we, re we remove it already. No more x. It's just simply a sub 0. If you try to notice it, the subscript of the coefficient corresponds to the exponent of x. So if this is n, this should be n. If this is n minus 1, this should be n minus 1. Like the 1 second to the last, if this is 1, this should be x to the first. x to the first or just simply x. Okay? The <coughs> main problem here is just to put, uh, bring out the solution of this uh, equation here, a polynomial, okay, a polynomial uh, is it a, an equation that contains many terms, right? The problem is just asking what will be the value of x, okay? The value, ba value of x could uh, be from a maximum maybe 2, no, no, uh, n will be equal to if n is equal to 2, that's quadratic, right? Uh, there's a, that's a special form. So it, we will start with 3 up to n. Okay? So we will start with 3 up to n, and we are asked to solve for the solution of uh, the given polynomial. Okay? I will, I will try to erase this one. So at least we now know the form. Uh, it's a, what they call this, a polynomial equation, okay, with the powers actually in this sequence uh, descending order, descending, right? It starts from the highest one, it goes to the last part will be 1, and the last part will be 0, meaning the power of x. Okay, uh, let's try to bring out the proper solution of this without the so-called trial and error. Because uh, if there are so many values for x, okay, sometimes uh, we could not uh, accelerate the solution because uh, we do the so-called trial and error. No more trial and error by using the so-called rational roots theorem. Okay, uh, we will just designate the coefficient of the first one will be q. And the coefficient of the last one will be p. Okay? Under the rational roots theorem, okay, so we could uh, go to the nearest uh, value of x, which is possible, or well, we, we will take the ratio of p over q, in which the condition for p over q should be a rational number. So the, 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 these are whole numbers, right? Uh, where p here is the factor of e sub 0 and q is the factor of e sub n. Okay, uh, q is for e sub n, p is for e sub 0, the pure constant term, right? 
Okay, uh, let's try to bring out an example so we could visualize the importance of this. Because uh, by taking the ratio P over Q, okay, uh, we will be going nearer, nearer to the so-called uh, correct solution for X. Uh, correct value for X. There will, will, there will be no more guessing, right? Okay, let's try to bring out an example so we could visualize the importance of this P over Q in the computation of the possible values of x. Of example, find the rational rules. So uh, we are given the polynomial 2x cubed plus 11x squared minus 7x minus 6 is equal to 0. So in here, the highest power of x is actually 3, right? And the pure constant term is actually negative 6. Uh, this is actually e sub 0. Right? Or let's try to bring out the solution of this using the so-called rational roots theory. Okay? No more guessing. Right? It is like this. The first step is uh, to make the coefficient of the first term unity. We must have to eliminate these two here. Okay? Uh, we must have to make the coefficient of x cubed 1. So, dividing all terms by 2, okay, 2x cubed divided by 2, or uh, we'll just multiply this by 1 half, right? So, 2x cubed times 1 half, these two will disappear. It will just be simply x cubed now. Next one, the equation will be divided by 2, right? 11x squared times 1 half, it will be 11 over 2x squared. Okay. And 7x times 1 half will be negative 7 over 2 times x. And the last part is uh, negative 6 over 2. That will be negative 3. Okay. Then after that, after making the coefficient of the first term unity, or just 1, Okay, uh, we now conclude that uh, this is Q and this is P. Meaning the coefficients. The coefficient of X cubed here is uh, 1. And the pure constant term is actually negative 3. Okay, so we go to the nearest possible values of X. We will take the possible uh, factors of P and Q, then we'll try to divide individually, okay? So the possible factors of 3, uh, it could either be plus or minus 1, or plus or minus 3. Why plus or minus 1? Because if we try to take plus 1 and negative 3, that will still be negative 3, right? And we will take negative 1 times again positive 3, it will still be negative 3. So the possible factors of negative 3 could either be plus or minus 1, or plus or minus 3. And the possible factors of 1, uh, it is just 1, so it will just be simply plus or minus 1. So, to, in order for us to go ne nearer to the possible solution of x, uh, we'll try to take the ratio pairs of this, these two here, the first ones. A plus and minus 1 over plus and minus 1 will still be plus and minus 1. And what will be the significance of this? Meaning to say, uh, if the ratio P over Q is plus or minus 1, one of the roots could be 1, and the other root could be equal to negative 1. That's the meaning of this. So we are not actually guessing, right? Because uh, we, we indicated the value, value of uh, P and Q, then we bring out or brought out the so-called possible factors. Then to compute for the possible values of x, we take the ratios of p over q. I uh, will just we just took the what they call this plus and minus one and plus and minus one, because the next one will be plus or minus three divided by plus or minus one. But uh, we will start first with the plus or minus one, assuming for the meantime that the value of x is one. So how do we know that x is one of the possible roots of this given equation? Okay, how we use synthetic division, right? 
Okay, uh, we will start with x cube. I uh, will take the coefficient of x cube, that's 1. Coefficient of x squared, that will be 11 halves. Coefficient of x will be negative 7 halves. The pure constant is negative 3. Okay. From our uh, previous computation, the ratio p over q, one of the possible rows is actually 1, right? So, so we try to place x equal to 1. Okay. Uh, we'll test it. Uh, is it possible that uh, it is a possible rule? Or it is something like this. Uh, we use synthetic division, right? So this is the coefficient of x cubed, coefficient of x squared, coefficient of x, and this pure constant. Okay, we'll do it like this. One possible root is x equal to 1. Let's try to test it if it is possible that uh, it is one of the root. Okay, so we bring down 1. 1 times 1 will be 1. 11 halves plus 1 will be 13 halves. Why 13 halves? Uh, because uh, this one here is actually 2 halves. Okay? Same denominator. So numerator will be 11 plus 2. That will be 13 halves. So this is 13 halves. 1 times 13 halves will be 13 halves. Minus 7 halves plus 13 halves. Okay? Same denominator. So, take the sum of the numerator, 13 minus 7 is 6, okay, 6. The common denominator will be 2. So, if we try to add this, the sum will be 3, okay. 1 times 3 will be 3, we place it here. Then try to take the sum. If we try to take the sum, this is minus 3 plus 3, it is 0. So, meaning to say, if we try to place the value x equal to 1 to this equation here, what comes out is a uh, is 0, okay, the remainder is 0. So, supposed to be x equal to 1 is one of the possible factors, right? It is just like how we place this one back here, then we try to simplify. If what comes out is 0 over t equal to 0, uh, x equal to 1 is one of the possible rules. So I place it here, x equal to 1 is a root, right? So the resulting equation now will be if x equal to 1 is a root, x minus 1 is a factor, right? So the first factor actually is x minus 1, and what will be the remaining factors? It is this. Uh, these are the coefficients of the remaining factor, 1, 13 over 2, and 3. This is for x squared. This is for x, and this is for the pure constant, this is God, right? So this is a quadratic equation, and this is a linear, right? A lin a by a linear, a, a binomial by times a quadratic, okay, that will be a cubic equation, right? So where we got this? It came from this, 1. For the coefficient for x squared will be 1, the coefficient of uh, x will be 13 over 2, and the pure constant is 3. So this uh, linear equation times this quadratic is actually the given cubic equation. Okay? So to solve all the roads, possible roads of x, it will be something like this. Uh, it will be x minus 1. I will write the first one. And the possible factors of x squared plus 13 halves x plus 3 is actually how oh, this is factorable by instruction. Uh, the possible factors of x squared is x and x. And the possible factors of 3 is uh, the product of 6 times 1 half. Because 6 times 1 half is 3. Am I still on camera? Okay, so it is 3. Oh, let's try to check the middle term. Or we'll just expand this one. I'll let us try to say if uh, what comes out is this, actually this one. So expanding this one, a binomial times binomial, x times x will be x squared, 6 times x will be 6x, 1 half times x will be 1 half x, right? 6 times 1 half will be 3. This will be x squared. Uh, this is 6x, right? 6x plus 1 half x. Okay, so we multiply this by 2 over 2. Okay, 2 times 6x will be 12 plus 1, that will be 13 over 2x.
So, if we try to add this one, that will be 13 over 2x. This is plus 3. And this equation here is same as this one. Right? So, the possible factors of this quadratic equation is actually the product of the binomial x plus 6 times the quantity x plus 2, and this should be equal to 0. And as a rule in algebra, uh, after taking the factors, equate its factor to 0, right? Uh, we are on the photogenics. So, equating uh, x minus 1 equal to 0, x minus 1 equal to 0, the first factor. Therefore, x sub 1 will be equal to 1 after the transposition. Taking the next factor, equate it to 0, x plus 6 equal to 0. Therefore, x now will be subscript to, meaning the second value of x, it should be negative 6. Taking the third factor, x plus 1 half equal to 0, x x sub 3 now, meaning the third value of x, it will be negative 1 half. That is after the transposition. So the three possible values of x, which are all rational, right? x1 is equal to 1, x2 equal to negative 6. Mm, rational, uh, this is still rational, right? Because uh, the numerator and the denominator are both uh, whole numbers. This is negative 1 half. So these are the three solutions of the given cubic equation. Okay, guys, that's the way how to solve a high power uh, polynomial equations without the gazing, right? Uh, we will be using the so-called uh, rational Rothschild by taking the ratio of p over q. So we could go to the nearest possible value of x, okay? Okay, guys, uh, that's the so-called rational Rothschild and how to bring out the solution of a high degree polynomial equation, okay? Good morning from Los Angeles. This is Professor David Jadalasuri.